Welcome back to this next edition of MetPy Monday. In this MetPy Monday, we're going to look at how we can further refine our satellite imagery to get something that looks better uh, and has lines on the map for geospatial references. This, we're going to need a, to work a little bit with uh, this I am show, and so it turns out that we can add a keyword argument called extent. The problem is our image here is in a projected coordinate, and the values that we have to georeference our data are in lat lawn format, not in this geostationary format. And so we're going to need to find these maximum values of our lat lawn points in order to plot this map up a little bit better. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to need to set up some variable names here to find the max min argument values or index values. And so we're going to set up an i lawn variable here. For me, that means the index value of the lawn for underscore the minimum point. So i lawn underscore min. And numpy again gives us some useful tools uh, to be able to do this. And specifically, np.arg min of lawn would find us the minimum index value for the longitude array. The only issue is that this is going to come back as a 1D array element, yet we have a 2D array. So we need to wrap this with something so that we can get out our 2D index value. And so we're going to go ahead and wrap it in np.unravel underscore index open parenthesis, and so we're going to feed unravel.index, our argmin index value coming back from that function. But that we need to tell it then what is the shape and how to unravel it. And so the, here we're going to use lawn.shape. And so we're going to need to do this not only for the longitude minimum, but the longitude maximum. So we'll go ahead and copy, paste this here, change our mins here to max, argmin, argmax and we'll have it set up again for longitude. We're going to also need to redo this for latitude so let's go ahead and copy both lines paste them back out using our keystrokes and here we're going to want to change lawns to lats in both locations so that we can utilize it later. And additionally here, just in case our shapes are different, they're not in this case, so this doesn't really matter, we can change to lat.shape. And so if we go ahead and run this, we can then print out ilawn underscore min to see what this looks like. And so we see that we get a tuple here uh, of 839.18. And so it turns out that our uh, minimum longitude point uh, is at the index value 839.18. Would have been really hard to find that on our own, uh, and so that's why we can use NumPy to help us out and do that relatively quickly. But now this is given the index values for where our minimum longitude is, and we've got subsequent uh, tuples for the, the maximum longitude, the minimum latitude, and the maximum latitude. But we need to convert these into our geostationary coordinate reference system. And so we're going to save those points off again. So we're going to set up this new variable called lawn point zero, which is going to be for our minimum equals. And now we need to use our coordinate reference system that we um, set up before, which we saved off as map CRS. And we're going to use one of its methods called transform point. So if we use our tab completion, it'll bring up a whole bunch of different things that begin with transform and we want transform point. And then we need to feed it our point. And so we're going to feed it our longitude for our uh, ilon underscore min point and our latitude point for that same location, ilon underscore min. And so now our longitudes and our latitudes are actually in geodetic space or just, you know, degrees, latitude, degrees, longitude. And so we need to tell this uh, function what that coordinate reference system is, so CCRS, and then we're going to say that they are geodetic. And specifically here for our lawn point min, we're going to want 
just the first value that comes out of our function here, so square bracket 0. Similarly, we're going to want to do this for our max longitude point, so we're going to copy, paste this line, change our lawn point 0 to be lawn point 1, change our mins here to be our max points in longitude, and still keep the 0 or x element coming out of our function. We're going to want to repeat all of this for our latitude point. So go ahead and copy and paste both of these lines. Instead of lawn, we're going to do lats here. Again, you can call the variables something different. Just remember what you call them for use later. So we're going to change our i lawns to i lats now for both our min and our max values. And so now we want our y values to come out. So instead of 0, we're going to want 1. So if we go ahead and run this cell now, now we have these lat and lawn points in our geostationary reference system. And so now when we go to plot, we've had to do all of this work to just make one simple correction here to our figure. So let's go ahead and copy and paste what we have been using as our figure. Specifically, we need to add something to IM show. We want to set the extent of this image so that it gives a proper orientation. So extent equals, and then in a tuple here, we're going to go ahead and do lawn point zero, lawn point one, lat point zero, lat point one. And so what we have here is our x min, x max, y min, y max. This is going to reshape the image slightly to give us a better projection for our overall map. So go ahead and run this. Ah, and sure enough, look at that map. We get something that looks more normal to us from this geostationary perspective. But again, here at this point, we still don't have any kind of reference points. So we don't have latitudes or we don't have uh, state lines or coastlines in here. So we're going to go ahead and import another part of Cartopi, Cartopi.feature as C feature, which is going to allow us then to copy and paste here this previous one and add in two specific lines to our map here. And so after our image, let's go ahead and add in two lines here. We want to add a feature to our axis. So axe.add underscore feature. And we're going to add from C feature, so from Cartopi feature functionality, coastlines. And so if we start with CO and hit tab, we'll see we have the ability to, to tab complete coastline. And we're going to want to do it with a particular scale. So with underscore scale, open parentheses, 50 meter up or 50m uh, for 1 by 50 million uh, meter scaling here, which is pretty nice. I'm going to set the edge color to equal white. And we're going to set our line width to be 0 0.5. We can similarly do this with state, so let's go ahead and copy and paste this line. And we're going to go ahead and change coastline here to states. So let's go ahead and run that and see what it looks like. And look at that. Now we have our coastlines right along where they should be, looking at our image, as well as our state references. And that looks pretty good. Thing is, we don't yet have any titles. And so let's here just go ahead and quickly add in a, a little title. And so in order to do that, we, we're going to want something with time in there. So let's go ahead and add in uh, one more module. So from netcdf4, import num to date. And then let's go ahead and set up a valid time, the time equals using this num to date functionality. We're going to want to feed it ds variables. Remember that time variable that we talked about that we wanted? 
So time, and then we're going to use the square bracket colon to bring in our data. But that we're going to need to specify the units, which we can get from our netcdf file. From ds.variables time.units. And so that's going to set up our uh, time in a, in a way that will print very nicely on our map. And then we're going to go ahead and copy and paste everything that we had done above, below. But now we want to add in a couple lines. So plt dot title and we're going to print our v time and we're going to print it in the location of the right hand side of the image at the top and then plt dot title and we're just going to add in a typed in title here of goes 13 visible satellite imagery and here we're going to put this one on the left hand side to keep them separate and then finally, just for niceties here, we're going to do plt.tight underscore layout to make a nice looking map. And then plt.show just for completeness sake. And we'll go ahead and run that. And now we see we get a really nice image uh, with our date time, but in this weird format. So it turns out here, we need to go ahead and specify the specific time element here. And so we'll just go ahead and specify zero in our plt dot title and then that will plot our title out with a time over on the side in a very nice format and so we have now completed the whole process of grabbing our data downloading that data reading in our data converting it into the proper format to get our final image from our netcdf data downloaded from the class server system in the next MetPy Monday, we're going to go ahead and look at how we do this for infrared data, uh, as there are going to be some different conversions needing to get to brightness temperature, which is what we often plot there. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.